um, for you all. Teddy A. Jones is an author and facilitator of 30 Days to Greater Self-Love. He's a counselor and a life coach. He is competent in speaking locally and internationally. He's extensive experience in youth and community with extensive experience in youth and community development. Teddy Jones is affectionately called the ghetto priest due to his involvement in the inner city and his commitment to the cause of justice for the oppressed. I love that one, you know, and so on today we have a very able man who will be speaking to us. I'm really, really excited and he knows I'm very, very happy. You know, he is such a humble person and he is truly generous. When I spoke to him with regards to this seminar, he did not hesitate to say yes. And I'm really, really humbled for that. Mr. Teddy A. Jones, we welcome you on today. I present to you Teddy Jones coming to speak to us. Thank you very much, my friend Sarah. Good afternoon, friends, children of God, fellow residents of this wonderful island. And um, young people, I, I was informed that this is a session for youth, and uh, I love being with youth. I love uh, interacting with and uh, sharing with young people at every opportunity that I get. All right, so um, the, would the host kindly, let me see, yeah, um, would the, the host kindly give me sharing privileges so that I can allow you to see the PowerPoint presentation that I have prepared to share with you. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share some thoughts with you around self-love, self-confidence, and self-development. All right, great, great. Thank you so much, thank you so much. So let me get this up for you. All right, great. All right, everyone, are you able to see my screen? Yes, we are. Okay, great. Okay, so we're going to jump right in. And I know that time has been allocated at the end for uh, time of question and answer. So I'm going to ask you to keep your device nearby so you can make some jottings or you can do it the traditional way, good old pen and paper. Jot down your question if there's something you want, you need further clarity on or a thought based on what I shared that you would like to share with the rest of us towards the end. Um, I will be inviting you to participate at a point as we go, get further on into the presentation. All right, so here we go. Self-love, self-development, self-confidence. And uh, the one of the main taglines that I use in my coaching practice is helping you become all that you can and should be. This is part of my personal sense and understanding of my life's purpose. And we're going to be mentioning life's purpose a little bit more in just a moment. How I understand my reason for existence, my raison d'etre, as the French put it, my reason for being, my reason for existence. I understand my role on earth as being here designed by God to help persons become all that they can become and all that they should become. So let me ask you to ponder 
silently contemplate your response to these questions. You don't have to answer out loud just now. Uh, just ponder the response. What have you done with your visions? What have you done with your ideas? What have you done with your dreams? The things that tug at your heart and refuse to go away, that, that view that you have of yourself, that thing, that great thing that you've always seen yourself as doing or accomplishing, where are you with that? What have you done with it? Are you working on it? Have you set it aside? Have you been discouraged away from it by others? Just that. What have you done with your visions, your ideas, and your dreams? I asked specifically about those three because as you see on the right of or my right, perhaps most likely your left, this is my logo, the logo for my coaching practice, coaching business, Avid Coaching Services. And it's representative, representative of activating visions, ideas, and dreams. Again, in tandem with what I told you is part of my life's purpose, helping persons to become all that they can and should be. And so as I pursue the practice of coaching, life coaching, transformative life coaching, I seek to help persons activate their visions, activate their ideas, activate their dreams, build on their dreams, water their visions, and nurture their ideas. Because God has placed those inside of us and so many of us because we are lacking in self-love we are lacking in self-confidence and we are not pursuing passionately self-development our visions our ideas and our dreams can be stillborn or they end up being deformed or they end up being mutated or worse aborted so i ask you to ponder honestly and answer yourself honestly what have you done with your visions your ideas your dreams i came across this quote by a guy called deso french and he says the important thing is to is this to be able to give up in any given moment all that we are for what we can become. One of my coaches said this to me at one time. He said, never let your good become the enemy of your best. And sometimes we, we settle. We settle for average, we settle for mediocrity. And so another one of my taglines is helping you to make the vertical leap from mediocrity to legacy. Helping you to make the vertical leap from mediocrity to legacy. Wherever you are relative to your visions, ideas, and dreams at this very moment, Will you be willing to give up that, however good or great you may think it is? Will you be willing to give that up if you knew that giving that up will jettison you towards your best self? Or will you prefer to stick with the known, the comfortable, remain in your comfort zone and live a mediocre life? Or will you be prepared to give up in any given moment, as Deso says, all that you are for what you can become? My friends, only you can answer that question. 
So we're talking about a bit about self-love, self-confidence, mm -hmm. and self-development. Let's set the tone by, by offering you some working definitions as to what those terms mean, starting with self-love. The clip on the screen, I think, is a beautiful picture. Oh, of uh, someone oh, my opening it up so that the core of their being, the core of their best self becomes visible to the world. I could look at that all day if I had the time. Self-love. By self-love, we are referring to the desire to give our well-being a level of importance and respect. For if you love yourself, you have regard for yourself. It is about treating yourself well, as well as you would treat anyone that you love. Giving yourself due importance, due respect, due regard, and treating yourself just as well as you would treat anyone that you right. love. It may sound simplistic and, and obvious. It is to think of yourself as being worthy of the same kind of excellent treatment that you would accord anyone that you love. To say the same thing a little bit differently. These thoughts on self-love are excerpts from my recently published book, published in the summer of 2020, I Love Me, 30 Days to Greater Self-Love. The, these perspectives on self-love are in that book, and uh, that book sells for $2,500. It's an ebook, but I'll tell you a little more about that as we get to the end. But those thoughts are from that book. The implication of those perspectives on self-love is that we, we need to stop smalling up ourselves. Stop smalling up yourself. Stop small up yourself. Fred Rogers, a renowned psychologist, says this, if only, and, and, and I want you to get this, I want you to really want you to hear this, if only you could sense how important you are to the lives of those you meet, how important you can be to people you may never even dream of. There is something of yourself that you leave at every meeting with another person. That's Fred, Rod Fred Rogers. In other words, you matter significantly to the lives of others in this world. So stop, small up yourself. One of my friends, a uh, marketing expert, helping companies in Jamaica and elsewhere to excel at their brand, brand development, Shane Bennett. Every now and then, whenever I have presentations, I do a quick browse through on social media to see what persons are saying that, that catches my eye in relation to the content of the presentation. And Shane's is one of them. There's another that I'll share with you later. And Shane said this on Twitter today. One huge thing I've learned in these 30 years, stop underestimating yourself and your value. You are much more powerful than you think, period. It aligns with what Fred Rogers says, and it aligns with the perspective I shared on self-love. Stop small up yourself. The opposite of self-love, which is actually quite prevalent, perhaps more prevalent than we may want to think, of course, is self-hate. In my book, 
30 days to greater self-love. I love me, 30 days to greater self-love. I reveal, I confess by describing myself as a former self-hater, as a healed self-hater. I share my story, my pain of my father wound and how that led to self-hatred. And I share how uh, my, while I was writing the manuscript, my son saw it and he's six and he's an avid reader. And he read it behind, came over my, my shoulder while I was typing at the laptop. And he said, daddy, what is self-hate? So daddy, you mean you, you used to hate yourself? And so I had to explain to him in, in, in a shorter version what that was about. Yeah, well, here are some manifestations of self-hate. Uh, it is also often referred to as self-loathing, the self-hate or self-loathing. The engagement in self-destructive behavior, whatever, uh, that's a very broad category. Um, inclusive of, but not restricted to, wrist cutting. In recent times, I have lost count of how many young ladies that I have observed just in, 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 in and, and not persons I know, just in casual con contact, as in we happen to be in the same store, we happen to be in the same public space, and I, I'm a very observant person. It's, it's part of my training and my profession. And I notice the number of them that are cutters. The marks are there. Multiple, cuts on the wrist. It, it, it is a way in which persons express deep dislike for themselves. So they, they cut just enough, just deep enough for the blood to spring out, but not deep enough for them to have to be rushed to the ER. The, the wrist cutting, overeating, reckless driving, routinely reckless driving, almost as if they are seeking out an accident. How about this one, overspending. And aha, uh -huh, we are in this, in, the, in, in another of the silly seasons of the year, where it's, it's a mad rush, a mad frenzy on the roads, a mad frenzy at the malls, and those who express their self-hate through overspending will have will go to see over the next couple of days. And then there is substance abuse, legal drugs and illegal drugs. Just a few of the manifestations of self-hate. In, in sharing the perspective of, of self-love, I mentioned this, the idea of almost giving yourself permission to love yourself, to treat yourself well in the same way that you would treat others. The truth is, we are almost in, in a kind of matrix, if, if you're um, old enough to remember the Matrix trilogy with Keanu Reeves. Very, very interesting movie from a, a, a philosophical, of course, in lots of good action and so on, but I tend to watch movies in a very deep way. So uh, lots of philosophical and theological uh, fodder things to, to chew on. Um, but the society in which we live tries to force us into a mold and, and, and dictate to us how we should see ourselves, how we should treat ourselves, how we should think of ourselves. So it's like the matrix. For the truth is most of us have been conditioned to believe that we should, we should put ourselves last. If you think about it, if you think about it long enough, you'll perhaps agree with me. We have been conditioned to believe that we don't deserve the best. At an emotional level, most of the times, the society places us in a kind of position where we don't believe that we deserve to give ourselves the best. Sometimes almost to the extent that you almost feel bad if you put yourself first, or if you think about yourself first. If you say no, for example, 
to someone's invitation or someone asking you to do something so that you could get, just get some me time. You almost, you're almost made to feel bad that you said no. Hear me, friends. You have to live with yourself every minute of the day. <laughs> like, duh. You have to live with yourself every minute of the day. You can't escape yourself. So you might as well enjoy your own company. You might as well get to love your own skin. You might as well get and begin to love yourself more. Those are the quotes I pulled from social media today. My friend Avril Scarlett out of Florida, um, one, of my, one of my former students at the Jamaica Theological Seminary and a recently published author. She wrote a powerful book about purpose. Avril says, the, the said today on, on Facebook, the struggle with identity is not often ignorance of self, but tension between selves, the one you know you are and the one you are expected to be. Remember, I'm talking about the society's forces upon us like a matrix. matrix. If people cannot accept the real you, then they may not be people you need in your life. Don't frustrate yourself trying to be what you are not. The more time you give to your real self, is the more that self grows and improves. Self development, dedicate the time you spend trying to please others to you. And that's the whole point of the, the activities that I have in the 30 days to greater self love, specific activities, one per day, that are designed to help you build the habit of loving yourself more. <laughs> It invites you to, to take time to develop you, take time to spend on you and with you. So I, I loved this quote from Avril. I thought I'd pull it in uh, like literally minutes before we got started to share with you. All right, so we, we're going to carry it on. My question then to you is, how do you determine your level of self-love, your level of self-worth? And more importantly, are you using the right criteria to measure your self-worth? And this is a very important question that we must each answer. You see, we cannot measure self-worth, self-love, without knowing ourselves. And we can't know ourselves without knowing where we came from, knowing how we got here and why. So we need to, 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 to grapple with the question, what on earth am I here for? I shared with you two, uh, two little bits of my own answer to that question, which, which I've been able to develop over the years with the help of my mentors and the help of my coaches. What, what are you living for? What, what is the point of life? And I'm sure you're familiar with the quest of King Solomon, the biblical King Solomon documented very well in the book of Ecclesiastes to discover the answers to these very questions, the meaning of life. What is the whole point of life? Is, is it about growing up and going to school and getting an education so that you can get a job so you can buy a house and then you buy a car and then you maybe get married and then you just, and then you lie down and die? Is, is, is that it? Is, is that all there is to life? Or is, is there something more, something bigger, something grander that we are here about and that life is really about? And I submit to you that there absolutely is. And that is defined by the word purpose. The one who purposed us to be on earth and an established earth carefully, creatively, innovatively, and delicately. 
intuitively so that the earth for example the, the the planet earth is located at precisely the exact position relative to the sun to sustain life such that if for example if the sun well if the earth was a fraction closer to the sun earth temperatures would be too hot for human life to exist. And if the earth was a fraction further away from the sun, earth's temperatures would be too cold for human life to be sustained. And all the other intricacies of the cosmos that speak to us about purpose. And this image on, on, on the screen is an artist's interpretation, deep seeking to depict the concept of Imago Dei the image of God. And I argue in my book that the key to understanding the place, the foundation to begin, the right criteria to use to begin to determine our self of worth and how much we should love ourselves is in understanding what it means that we as human beings were made in the image and the likeness of God, that we are image bearers of God, Imago Dei. Let me share with you. Uh, so, so, I, I'm, so I am positing that, and I want to ask you to respond. So you, you can, um, if, if you can, if it is not gonna be disruptive, you can just unmute your mics for a little bit, just for, for this screen. The survey says, what do you think? And I'd like to hear a response, a yes or a no from, from, from you. Do you think that a child should love themselves any more or less? Imagine now that you are a parent. Some of you are probably, prob probably parents uh, or maybe guardians. And, and you have a, imagine now that you have a small child you are seeking to raise this child to be a, a fully functioning, maximized human being. Do you think that a child should love themselves any more or any less if they are wealthy or poor? What do you think? No. No. No? You know. All right. How about this one? Do you think a child should love themselves more or less if they were more or, or more or less attractive than the average person? Oh. No. Are you sure? Are you sure it's no? Anybody say yes? No. <laughs> no, don't worry, it's not that trick sure question. Not. <laughs> I'm sure it's no. Okay, all right, and so in, in, in that section, in the opening chapter of the book, I make the point about here about attractiveness that of course, again, the matrix concept, the society dictates to us what attractive, what beauty and attraction look like, all right? Uh, and so at, at one point, it is about being as slim as you can be. And then um, not so long ago, it was about being fluffy. Um, and then people started talking about big girls rock, and then it was um, thickers or tickers, and and and, and um, tick like porridge was trending, and straight nose and long hair and the whole works. And of course, you know that it is well documented that the greatest amount of sales of income globally for uh, body modification comes from the African American, the African American community. The wigs, the extensions, the you name it. But that's a whole other seminar altogether. We're not gonna go too far into that. All right, next one. Should should the child love to children love themselves more or less if they have failed more times than they have been successful? No. No? no? or if they have succeeded more times than they have failed. How about that one? Should, should they love themselves more or less if they have succeeded more times than they have failed? Love themselves more for failing. They should love themselves more for failing. Yeah, because they made an effort to try. 
Okay, hmm. interesting. Either question. way, they should love themselves. Either way, they should love themselves. All right, thanks. And the last one, should a child love themselves more or less? Well, overall, based on these factors and um, predominantly, overall, overwhelmingly, you said no. So having said no, my question to you then is, if as a parent, you would not expect or want your child or a child to love themselves any more or less on the basis of those circumstances, why then are adults or why do adults love themselves less on the basis of those circumstances? Not saying you necessarily, but it happens. People don't love themselves because they, are, they think that they are poor. People don't love themselves because they don't think that they are beautiful. My nose is too big, my teeth, my teeth them both, my forehead too big, my leg them, my, my, my foot them knock me, and the list goes on. Or failure. All of these that we have listed are criteria that people consistently use to determine how much they should love themselves. And these, I argue, and I conclude, are nothing but shaky foundations, faulty, false, fake foundations of self-love. Loving yourself, determining your self-worth and your self-love on the basis of your education, your body shape or attractiveness, your career, your finances, your possessions, your successes or failures, or who you know. Oh, I, I, I know Spice personally. She's my, she's my, um, my 14th cousin <laughs> kind of a thing. You know, people basing their sense of worth, their sense of identity on who they know. Their finances. These are the very things that you all just said, no, a child should not use to love themselves any less. But in truth and in fact, as adults, these are the very foundations that we tend to use to determine whether we should love ourselves solidly or not. Comparing ourselves on the on the uh, putting down ourselves on the basis of how many subjects we passed, putting down ourselves on the basis of the job, the kind the, the kind of job that we do, and putting down others, not just ourselves, but putting down others. Again, the matrix imposing on others a measurement of self love that they should use that is based on these criteria. So to go back to where we were just now, the right foundation. These are faulty foundations. The right foundation is the image of God. This is the place where we must begin to understand who we are and having such an understanding of who we are, made in the image and the likeness of God, sets the tone and sets the foundation for us to have a healthy sense of our worth. The basis for loving ourselves rightly. Here are some of the implications which I, I share in my book. The implications of being made in the image and the likeness of God. One, humans, we have a distinct, it means that we have a distinctive creative supremacy. What that means in simple terms is that of all, cre all the creative things, we are supreme. We are made and set apart from the dogs and the fish and the birds and the cockroaches. So when a man describes himself as a dog, that man is doing an affront to the distinctive creativeness that he has, the, supreme, the, the, the distinctive creative supremacy that, we, that he has. 
And, I, and as I, I like to tell some of these young men, we do not talk about our dog. We are this and our this male dog. Because even male dog have choice. Some of them don't, don't have no discretion. When, when, a, when a male behaves as if he is a machine with absolutely no control over his hormones, not discriminating as far as sexual expression is concerned, even male dogs exercise discretion. So to behave like that is to bring yourself even lower than an animal. It means that we have access to God's four dimensional, God's love, which is described in a four dimensional manner. The classic passage is Romans, uh, is Ephesians. In Ephesians, Paul says, I pray that you will have power, Ephesians chapter one, to comprehend, to understand the dimensions of God's love. He says, the height, the length and the height and the width and the depth of God's love. Now, of course, he is using human language to try to help us to understand how much God loves us. And if you understand this, then you begin to get the right foundation for yourself. Because no, God loves, God's love is long enough. Means that there, there is no expiry date on God's love for you. Some people will love you only as long as you have money. Some people will love you only as long as they are um, near to you. God's love is high enough. It, that means that wherever you are, it meets you. It's wide enough. That means it has room for everyone and then you in a, in a, in a supremely special way. And then it's deep enough to make you good enough so that no matter how low you think you have sunk, no matter how shameful you think you have behaved, no matter how unpardonable you think that, that that thing that you know that you have done, that nobody else knows, that, that keeps coming back to your memory, that you feel so ashamed about, and you feel as if God could never forgive you. God's love is deep enough to make you good enough. And this is, this is one of the, the most common dilemmas that people face that leads to them being unable to be all that they can and should be. It's called the good enough dilemma. The dilemma of feeling that I am not good enough. God's love is deep enough to make you good enough because it accepts you as you are and, and offers you healing. A place to belong, and a couple others. Um, there are others that I that I share in the book. Uh, number three, being made in the image of God. It means that you are, you are the object of God's ultimate expression of love. You see the cross over there. That was God's ultimate expression of love for us when Christ died on the cross. And guess what? That was about you in a general sense for all of humanity, but in a very specific sense for you as an individual. That was about you. And then it remains unchangeable. Unlike human beings, where their love for us is so conditional. Again, in Romans chapter eight, Paul argues that there is absolutely nothing that can separate us from the love of God. So I want you to hear me and hear me very well. There is nothing you can ever do that could make God love you any more than he already does or any less. And in, in my story, I share that that was what gave me deliverance from my self-hatred and how that was holding me back from being all that God wanted me to be. When I, when I came to understand it, all of these things about God's love. So I come to you in this very moment 
Remember at the beginning, that quote from Deso, which said, which said, ask whether you would be prepared in any given moment to give up all that you are so that if it meant that you could be all that you could be, your, your greater self, your best self, I want you to realize that right now, not yesterday, not tomorrow, not the next five minutes, not the next minute even, right now is all you have. We live only in the now because now is all we have. How long is now, you ask? Now is a period of time between zero and six seconds long in length which is the time that it takes for the brain to receive a perceptory signal, a sensory signal, to receive that signal, process that signal, and give instructions to the body. So, so you're hearing my voice as I speak. Your, your brain is doing all of that in less than six seconds. It is detecting the sound and it is converting that sound into words with meaning that you can understand and it is giving instructions to you some that you are you aren't even even conscious of some of you your brain is telling you oh yeah, yeah, don't worry about that guy talking stuff some of you, your brain is telling you you need to listen some of you, your brain is telling you ah yeah that makes sense your brain is processing, and all of that is happening in the now. After six seconds, that becomes the past, and a new now begins. That's why the things that you do, the decisions that you make in the now, are always going to be the most important. What you do in the now. But it will require you to, to move yourself out of this, this, this the unconscious realm into the conscious realm making conscious decisions taking conscious steps towards your self-development because that is going to involve the totality of your mind and your body your whole self what do we mean by self-development it is it is the process of you, know, you see you see see there consciously improving oneself in various aspects of life it is a conscious pursuit of personal growth if you have a child and that child does not show evidence of growth then you should be worried but the truth is many of us are growing physically but we are not growing cognitively we are not growing emotionally and for those of us who are our disciples of Jesus, we, we may not be growing spiritually either. No, that should concern you. Because if a parent has a child that is not growing, that parent is going to be concerned. If a farmer plants crops and they are not showing signs of growth, the farmer is going to be concerned. But because, but because we dwell so much in the unconscious, we aren't growing and we don't even realize it. So we don't, we don't take steps to better ourselves such as by learning new skills competencies knowledge or overcoming bad habits we become comfortable and complacent with and about our bad habits so what what, what have you done with all the extra time that you now have on your hands because of the pandemic <laughs> most persons have wasted it complaining bitterly rather than using some of that time to engage in self-development you know what i did with my time I, I i wrote and published at least five books in 2020 i launched and ran the campaign 30 days to greater self-love the master class series i completed so far three different new certifications one with google 
I completed my life coaching certification. I just completed with the Jamaica Stock Exchange, the, the, the securities certificate. And, and today, at the end of this presentation, I'm gonna be going into class for the one that I'm currently doing. Why? Because I believe that I must use my time wisely to develop myself so that what? So that I can be all that I can and should be. So I'm not talking to you about fluff and theory. I'm talking to you about what I do because I can't coach persons to do what I myself am not prepared to do. The aim of self-development then is to achieve fulfillment and reach your fullest potential. I believe that, that we do a, a great disservice to ourselves and to humanity when we fail to develop ourselves to reach our full potential. So I have an activity um, and we're, we're nearing the end. We're almost there, but I have an activity, a self-development activity. I'm going to read through, it's, it's, it's called Defining Outcomes, one of the activities that we do in NLP, in which I am certified as a life coach, as a master practitioner, neuro-linguistic programming. It is about rewiring, re, reprogramming our brains, as it were, to bring about desired change and growth, which is what coaching is all about. So um, if you can, get something to write, or maybe just make some jottings on your phone. Or if you want to rely on, on memory, you can do it, you do it um, mentally. Let's listen to the following questions and come up with an answer for it, for the question. So here we go. What do you want your future to look, sound, and feel like? One of the things I've discovered with young people in, in Jamaica is that so many of them are unable or unwilling to think beyond the next five minutes or the next weekend. That's as far as their planning goes. That's as far as their visioning goes. No, no five-year plan, no, no plan for themselves, their lives for the next two years, the next 10 years. They, they're almost in, in, incapable of visioning. And so, so they are not living for anything. They are not striving after anything. So think about it. See if you can see it. See if you can hear what it sounds like. See if you can feel it. All, 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 the fact, get the senses engaged. And, and like I said, this is an activity that we would typically do in, in a one hour or so coaching session. I'm just, I'm just giving you a little teaser because it will be sufficient to at least get you thinking, get your mind thinking. Because I wanted the, the seminar to have some practicality to it. What, what do you really want from life? Perhaps you've never thought about it. But what is it that you really want out of life? Huh? What is really important to you in life? Coming at, coming at it again. What do you want to do or achieve in life? Some of them may sound like they are asking the same thing, but they're actually not. And, but of course, your answer for each of them may actually be identical, and that's okay. Uh, what is a realistic target for the next three months and six months in relation to your answer on, on to the previous questions? Uh, this is from the Priority Academy, the academy where I did my life coaching training and certification. Defining outcomes. Realistic target. Three months from now, January, February, March, end of Q1 of 2021. We don't know what the pandemic will look like next year, but so what? 
I refuse to allow coronavirus to dictate the contours of my life. I am living, I am visioning, I am planning as if there is no corona because I am planning for life beyond the corona. If it never goes away, life will continue and I will continue to thrive. And those who were focused on their visions that they had at the start of 2020 are ending this year with some progress and some have even thrived even in the midst of a pandemic you know what the difference is those who were conscious of their vision for their life and were disciplined enough to work at it changes had to be made yes but they we stop at it and so we are not victims we are emerging as victors and we are setting ourselves up. We are poising ourselves to spring forward into the new year, whatever it brings with the continued pursuit of excellence. That's what I'd love for you to develop for yourself. All right. Uh, so some further core questions just to get you really thinking about your life and, and where you are and where you need to go on this journey of self-love and self-confidence and, and self-development. Core questions. What have you been stopping yourself from doing or achieving? Yeah, you, not your neighbor, not the person who you think I try to salt you up, you, not the devil, you. We love blame the devil thing too much for things we don't even know about. When we very often are our own worst enemies, what have you been stopping yourself from doing or achieving? And when was the last time you stopped yourself? What were you thinking at the time? What did you tell yourself about the situation? Yeah, I know I'm, I'm going fast because you know I, I want want, to, want us to get to the end. Um, and I'm just giving you a little exposure. Something will stick, right? And um, one of the things I offer is uh, a complimentary that's free, um, thirty to forty-five minutes call, uh, a service call, a self-discovery call. And you are most welcome to um, go to my website. I share that with you at the end and set up a, a booking for a server call, a one on one Zoom call where I help you to work through some of these just as an initial conversation to help you to begin to see where you might be able to benefit from coaching and how that can, can proceed. All right. Uh, what reasons did you give yourself or others? for not following through? Uh, was this just a story or was it really true? That reason that you gave for not following through, for giving up, for stopping yourself. What's the story behind all of this? What's really going on here? What's going on with you? Why have you been, st been stopping yourself? All right, so what's the true story here? Core questions for you to reflect as far as we remember back to our first uh, screen. What have you done with your visions, ideas, and dreams? The core questions relate to that. All right, uh, I'm going to skip over this one and share this one with you uh, again directly from the book. There are 31 specific activities one per day in the group i'm just going to share seven um i'm going to make aspects of the segments of the presentation available to you through Ms. Sarah. so especially this because i want you to have that and if you are serious here are seven concrete things you can do decide on a week when you will start start the monday and go up to the following Sunday. Seven habits to greater self-love. Day one, accept all the compliments that come your way. Day two, start reading a book on the topic of self-love. 
in day three, create and use affirmations. Powerful, powerful. And I, I, I challenge you to, to write them down and, and carry them with you on a flashcard or, and post them on your refrigerator, post them on your bedroom door, places that you will see them and, and you speak them, affirmation. You develop the affirmations. Don't pull anything from the internet, make them yours. Day four, do something you've always wanted to do. Day five, admire your body. Do you know that there are some, there, there are some people who cannot stand in front of a mirror? They will not do it because they believe they have convinced themselves or maybe they have allowed others to convince them that their body is misshapen and ugly. So they will, they will not go in front of a mirror. Now, I'm not I'm suggesting that you go to the other extreme now and become a narcissist. Right? But day five, admire your body. Day six, eat nutritiously. Again, if you love yourself, if you truly love yourself, you will begin to pay attention to what you eat and how you eat. Too many of our Caribbean people are dying from lifestyle diseases. And increasingly young persons have hypertension, diabetes, and are all manner of cancers. And I strongly believe that that has a lot to do, the cancers in particular, have a lot to do with our diet. So day six, eat nutritiously. And day seven, send yourself a love letter. Sit down, write yourself a love letter and send it to yourself as an email or mail it to yourself at the post office. Like if you really want to go all out, you want to go hard with it. All right. So this is our seven of the 31 specific activities that I share in the book that are designed to help you to develop. And these work. They absolutely work. All right, so I just, I'm just sharing seven with you. All right, so, um, so, so that's it. I'm done. I'm going to show you what the what the what the cover of the um, it's a trilogy set, but it's available. You can get the book standalone, or and like I said, these are ebooks. Um, not doing any print copies for now. Um, and then there is the daily tracker, a nice little tracker as part of helping helping you to hold yourself accountable to each day's activities activity. And then there is the worksheet that is designed to help you to work through um, some of the in more detail for your personal reflection and, and uh, times of, of solitude and so on as you work through each of the day's activities. The complete the total set the, the, of the three is five thousand dollars. The book by itself, just the book standalone, is two five. Um, and um, you know, perhaps, perhaps if you, uh, we, we, we probably can be able, can work out a nice discount just just for your group. Uh, we can probably talk about that. Um, I'll discuss that with with Sarah and and other other leaders. So there's that. And um, here are some of the others. I told you that I, I completed a number of others in 2020. Let's measure the minors. This was my first book. This one is available in print and it's on Amazon and Barnes and Noble, etc. Based on the five books in the Bible that have just one chapter, there is that one I Love Me 30 Days to Grace and Self Love. Um, becoming a Magnetic Speaker and then boosting that confidence, improving your strength to achieve your goals. Then um, the two most recent ones. Emotional intelligence, emotional intelligence, and uh, 51 ways to overcome shyness. There are two others, uh, Mentoring 101, all about how to be a mentor, how to start mentoring. And uh, the power, well, three actually, the power of resilience. How do you bounce back from setbacks and difficult situations? And then, um, your best year ever. This one is going to be released specially for 2021, closer to December 31st, your best year ever. All right. So these are all titles that are available and you can 
talk to me about how you can get get those um let's skip through those so that's my website www.teddyajones.com and to to book a complete your complimentary call discovery call you would click on coaching when you go on the website www.teddyajones.com and um we're going to go to the questions and and comments why so i'm just going to keep this on screen so you can jot them down how to connect with me i did forget to include my number um so it's 876 of course 826 1500 that's for calls or or whatsapp and um the others are there the website facebook ig uh youtube the youtube channel and my my, my podcast and twitter of course all right so there you have it um i'm gonna switch uh, you can um well, well this this is still on the screen but um I think one of the leaders is going to moderate the question. Any questions or comments that you have um, in terms of um, the time and so on. Um, oh my goodness, the time wow. is going down so quickly. All right, so let me just indicate, I did indicate to Ms. here, I do have a 6.45 um, appointment. So it's 6.21 now, so let's say about the next 10 minutes um for your questions and that would give me a little time to drink some water and uh, or to prepare for my my 645 interview all right if that's okay with you anything you have with when we don't get to treat with it here you have the contacts feel free to shoot me a message shoot me on um shoot me a whatsapp shoot me a message on any of these platforms all right thank you so much Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Jones, for such an intriguing, direct, appealing presentation. Really, really just very, very profound and very beautiful. You know, I sat here and I was just saying to myself, my God, what an achievement. I mean, you have been really busy throughout this whole corona thing. <laughs> Very, very admirable. All right, we're just going to jump right in the nick of things for those who may have questions for um, Mr. Jones. I'll just go ahead and read from the chat. And um, I myself have questions, some questions here. So let's just jump sure. into that really quickly. Um, as you know, this is now the technology age and um, everyone is on social media and so on, so on and so forth. However, we know social media to be good, but it really does also have its bad and it has its way of making us feel inadequate, inadequate mm -hmm. in ourselves about our achievements, so on and so forth. And you have really spoken to self-love. How do we love ourselves still? How do we love ourselves though society tells us that we're not good enough, we're not shaped, you know, in the proportions that, you know, in demand or <laughs> should be i mean how do we accept who we are how do we just love on ourselves right uh very very good question and you, you made a, a poignant observation um there are there there is a serious seriously growing concern and trend uh for what cyber bullying for example yes and trolling as, as another, and the phenomenon of where young, per, again, predominantly young persons who have gone as far as committing suicide because, get this, because somebody unfriended them on Facebook. Wow. Because somebody unfollowed them, because persons are unsubscribed from their channel. Uh, I'm in a business WhatsApp group and a young lady was, was, was this close to having a total meltdown yesterday because a number of um, her subscriber count on YouTube went down. YouTube is um, rolling out a new algorithm. And so subscribers who are not liking your videos, watching your videos, interacting, they are actually desubscribing them. And the young lady was almost about to have a meltdown. Now, again, it goes back to locating your identity and your self-worth, which is the foundation of, of self-love, in the right place. When you, when you ground your identity and your self-worth in the 
immutable, the undisputable fact that you are made in the image of God and the implications, like I shared. So that's a critical part of the presentation. The implication made in the image of God as the foundation of self-love and the implications of that. Understanding that, that the fact that God's love for me does not change. And so when I rightly understand that, the, the world's opinion of me, the matrix, I will not allow myself to be sucked in by the matrix because I understand that the opinion that matters most is God's opinion. That God made me and God made me as he wanted to make me for his purpose. So however I am, it means that I am just right. I am good enough in God's eyes. And not only that, God has given me clear instructions as to how to, to maximize his love and all that he makes available to me. All right? So when our foundation is rooted there, these other foundations, some of them are very tempting, but if we always pivot back to what God says. So one of the songs, I went through a very, very rough patch in 2019 from about the middle of the year onwards. And just around that time, uh, I don't even remember how I came upon it, but this song by Lauren Daigle, you say, if you don't know it, go and look it up. Lauren Daigle, D-A-I-G-L-E, you say. She talks about, the lyrics of what said, um, there's a section where it says what you what you think of me and what and it's all about what god says about me and and, and i just burst in that because i'm like oh yeah at the end of the day it is what god says that matters most. And, and it will chasing chasing the hype chasing the likes chasing the the, the comments and that's where people people get people lose their values chasing the limelight and chasing the hype and chasing the likes but all of that it's it is a a shaky foundation the world and social media is proving to be a most fickle place watch this friends the same crowd that was shouting hosanna hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord to jesus on 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 sunday on palm sunday is the same crowd that was shouting crucify him on friday so true the crowd will always do what the crowd does live for the audience of one as guinness said that live for the audience of one God is your audience. Live as if the only you are on stage and the only person in the crowd that matters is God. And God is, God goes wild over you. God, God thinks highly of you. Even when you make a mistake, even when you fall, his love, his love is just, just, is just totally crazy. And, and I tell, I, I, as I said, I share, I share my story in the book very openly. It was the love of God that rescued me. With all the potential that I had in me, none of this would have been available to the world today if I had not been rescued by the love of God because of my father wound. And it was, it was a breakthrough revelation and understanding of God's love for me that made, made me begin to believe in myself that I could ever amount to anything good. I was, I was always brilliant. I was always top of my class, but my self-esteem was below the ground. <laughs> Paradoxical. <laughs> uh, you know, so that's it. Get the foundation right. God, nothing else. Everything else is, is shaky. A shaky foundation. Excellent response. I love that. Um, so I was coming to the, well, it's, it's really, you know, I sat here and I heard you speak to the song, You Say, and I smiled because we had played it pr 
prior to you joining us oh, on this afternoon. I oh thought, my goodness. I, yes, I thought it to be a very fitting song. <laughs> there you song go. The you and, and it's I also did not a know. Right. I did not know. So that's, that's I know, right I there. know. You that's were not on, on the platform. And it's also yes. a song that I really do love. So, you know, yes. I was deliberate in playing it this afternoon. So when I heard Good. you speaking to it, Good. I really just... Um, smiled i was coming to another question because you had spoken um with regards to a situation that you had encountered mm -hmm. you know maybe in your younger years having to do with your dad and that hurt and i was coming um to the question to ask what would you say to someone else who is struggling with loving themselves because of what they have experienced or have been exposed to or have been through what yeah. would you say to them i know there are persons here who may be listening to you and asking themselves but how where do i begin how do i just change the way i i feel about myself how what approach do they take how do we mm -hmm. go forward mm -hmm. all right great so again uh start with with start with reading with with a fresh with fresh eyes what the bible says about about you um passages like passages like like I, um the book of isaiah has a lot to say about you know god's 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 view of us and start start with genesis genesis one to three a lot of times we think of the human story as starting at Genesis 3, where, where Adam and Eve messed up. But read, read from the beginning before you get there. So, because the story doesn't begin there. But also, very practically, um, sometimes we literally have to seek out help from other human beings. Um, so if you don't have a mentor, I would say try to find a mentor. Um, and again, pray and ask God to provide you with a mentor. Somebody who can be that representative of what a stable love of an older person looks like, um, especially those of us who had a bad relationship or none with our dads, with our fathers. If you can find a, 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 a male role model, somebody who is grounded, who can be a mentor to you, right? I know um, a lot of churches have some kind of system where they try to connect young persons with, with mentors. Um, look outside of your church um, if you can't find any there, but try to find a mentor. And then for others, uh, you may actually need to seek out counseling to deal with some of the stuff because some of this stuff can be really deep and painful, right? So it's a, it's a multi-pronged approach and then build around yourself meaningful and deeper friendships. Persons connect with persons of your same gender who can take this journey with you. So part of my process was that I had a mentor, an older man, and then I had pairs a group of guys we from high school i had a, a group through through we journeyed through college together and then when i came to to tertiary i had a new group and we are still together to this very day we share with each other very very deeply beyond the surface um i'm not talking about this whole thing about my bff and it's very superficial stuff people that you take selfies with and people that you snap and TikTok with we're not talking about that Talking about people who, who understand you and people who are, are like-minded, people who are going somewhere, people who have a sense of the seriousness of life, not people who just want to joke out life and it's all about taking selfies and snaps. No, you don't need those kinds of people in your life. You need people who are serious, people who you can share your struggles with, people who can be confidential, people who will, um, the Bible said, Proverbs talks about iron sharpening iron, people who can help you to overcome. And again, that's part of how my, my process and my journey was. And I have a group of guys around me like that who play that role to this very day. And we are, we are tighter than tight because we know that we need, we feed off of each other's energy. 
when we are low, when we are high, we, we, we know each other's deep, dark secrets and our struggles.